Uh, Lily Arnold. Lily. Jean and Lily. um we'll be interviewing you today. Okay, fine, that's good. See. How old are you both? Um I'm ten. And I'm ten. Okay, fine, good. Okay. What do you want to be when you're younger? What do I want to be when I grow up? What did you want to be? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I wanted to be a dentist. Why did you want to be a dentist? Well, because at the time I thought it was a very good profession and a very good career, so um I, I thought it was something that, um, you know, that, that would be a very good, safe uh, career that would uh, benefit people and also benefit myself. However, I wasn't bright enough to become a dentist. I couldn't. Uh, I found the the, the training in the sounds far too difficult for me, so I didn't become a dentist. But that's what I wanted to be when I was at school. Um, when you were younger, did you were you always up for going to the dentist to get your teeth checked? Um, I suppose I was, yes, yes, it didn't um, cause me too much concern, I must say. Did you have good teeth? I did actually, yeah, well, just normal, you know, sort of, my milk, milk teeth came out and um, just put them under the pillow and get uh, six points, or whatever it was, I can't remember now, but it wasn't much. Anyway, <laughs> yes, no, I, I used to go to the dentist, I didn't mind going to the dentist, I know a lot of young people don't like going to the dentist, but it didn't bother me at all. Who inspired you when you were younger? Good question. Um, <clears throat> I think I was inspired by the BBC. I was inspired by the BBC because in those days the BBC was a very, very uh, educational format and the BBC was um, inspirational. I mean, it, it, when I was young, the BBC was aspirational. I think in today's in, in today, a lot of television is what I call dumbed down, and instead of appealing to the highest common denominator, they appeal to the lowest common denominator, and that's where I think it sadly goes wrong. Because I think everybody likes to be inspired, and, and certainly television in those days, BBC in particular. Because you see, when I was your age, we didn't have ITV. And there was only one channel, BBC. We didn't. Even, we just called it the BBC. We didn't call it BBC One. It was just BBC, and that's all you had to watch. And I remember as a young child in 1953 going to my aunt's, my great aunt, and walking all the way to her house, <coughs> uh, which was quite a long way because we used to walk everywhere in those days. I remember walking to her house in early to watch the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. So. Um, you know, this is a long time ago, of course, but in those days, of course, it was black and white and the television wasn't very large, not a great big screen like they are today. We all huddled around and watched the coronation on the television, which was probably, you know, one of the highlights of uh, 1950, well, it was the highlight of 1953, of course. So, yes, so um, I'd say television, BBC it was in those days, so there wasn't sort of ITV or Sky or anything like that. It was all in black and white, but it was inspirational. Um, what were your hobbies when you were in? Uh, good grief, that's a good question. Fishing, I used to go fishing. I used to cycle off to the rivers, to the Thames and fish. Uh, <coughs> and of course in those days it wasn't quite the same as today. The roads weren't nearly as busy. I mean to see a car was an event as opposed to just seeing a stream of cars all the time as you do today. So I used to, to go off on my bicycle with a friend and we used to go fishing. We all used to go to the woods and, uh, uh, and pick mushrooms and so on. Um, I did all the normal things that kids do, I suppose, you know, playing and so on. There seemed to be near me, there was a lot more rural areas, you know, woods and so on. And uh, we used to play in the woods, cowboys near me and all this sort of nonsense. But, you know, it was a different time and it was a much more shall I say, trusting time where you could go off and do things and parents weren't quite so bothered about where you were because, it, I don't know, there wasn't quite the same panic about safety as there is today and, you know, health and safety would have been a word we'd never even heard of, you know, the two words we'd never heard of, health and safety didn't exist. So we were allowed to do all sorts of things like climbing trees and falling off trees and cutting ourselves and all sorts of stuff, but, you know, it wasn't quite so 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 difficult in those days and you know it's quite fun actually. Were you interested in nature and like the natural world? 
Oh yes, I think everybody. Yes, of course. I mean, you know, I think the wonderful thing about living in this country is the fact that you have the joy of the seasons. Whereas if you live in a lot of countries throughout the world, and I've been to quite a few of them now, is the fact that you, you go to these countries and uh, you know, it's just summer all, all year round, which sounds nice, I know, but you know, there's nothing like sort of when winter comes on, you have to put more clothes on, put an overcoat on, and you really enjoy the benefit of all the different seasons. And you see in the spring the the, the, the flowers growing and suddenly the, the grass grows and so on and then you get to the summer and it's hot and it all burns off and then in the autumn the, the, the trees start to wither and so on and so forth and then in the, in the um, winter of course you get the snow and the cold and all the rest of it. It's rather charming that we have seasons because a lot of countries don't have that pleasure of having some loud and rainy season perhaps but it's not quite the same, you know, it's just hot all the year round and I, I love I love the sort of um, you know, the climate that we have here. It's just absolutely marvellous. Ex explain what inspired you to go into business. Um, well, basically, um, I didn't do terribly well at school, and um, it made me it made me more inspired to sort of make something of myself. And I suppose the business seemed to an easy route for somebody like myself. I, I didn't go into business day one. I worked for an enormous lot of companies, large and small, and in the end uh, stumbled across an idea that I decided to go for, and that was called All Trade Trader, or Thames Valley Trader, it was known in those days. And um, you know, I worked uh, all hours got sent, you know, sort of 24 hours a day, nine days a week, and all the rest of it. And uh, it proved successful, but it wasn't. Uh, without its failings and indeed you know, its setbacks, but at the same time it, it was a real sort of struggle to, to make it happen and um, I'm pleased to say I did make it happen, which was, uh, it was hard work and it was, um, it was more, um, well it was very hard work, determination and, and so on to make, make it happen, but I was very lucky at the same time. So um, as Auto Trader was one of your first businesses, um, have you always liked cars? Well, I did when I was young. I mean, I must say, I think most young people like cars. Well, we did in my time anyway, and uh, we we loved um, we loved cars because uh, they were so romantic and, and so beautiful in those days. I mean, cars in those days were came in all different shapes and sizes, and they were all different. Whereas today, I think cars are becoming more standardised. You know, they become people carriers, and they all look more or less the same. Whereas in those days. You know, they were, a lot of them had their own uh, unique qualities about them and, and designs and all the rest of it. And I always remember, I mean, my favourite cars were the Jaguars because they were always so exotic. And I always remember uh, when I was about 19, I suppose, I can't remember the exact age I was, but I remember seeing my first, what was called, an E-Type Jaguar. Now, the E-Type Jaguar was, a, was an amazing car. It was sort of like a spaceship. And I remember seeing the first one in Reading and I thought, my goodness, what a fantastic car that is. And I thought, one day perhaps I'll get one of those. And do you know what? Now I've got one. And it's kept in my garage over at North Court. I don't ever use it, of course, because now, of course, it looks quite old fashioned compared to the new cars. But, you know, that, that was just a epic car of its time, as indeed was the Jaguar XK120, which again was a revolutionary car when it came out. I mean, yeah, they were very romantic cars when I was younger. I, to be fair, I think I liked the the, art, the 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 design of them as much as anything else. I wasn't much of a mechanic as so, well, but I, I loved the look of them. And uh, and the Jags certainly were very very beautiful cars. So yes, so um, so yes, um, I've forgotten the question there, but yes. <laughs> do you do you still feel as lucky as you did two years ago in your job? Yes, I do. I feel enormously lucky. I always have felt very lucky. I haven't had the best time for the last four or five years due to the economic downturn. And because I've got so many businesses, it's been very tough. But you know what? I sort of do my best and I struggle on and I get there. And uh, But it has been um, probably the worst four years of my life, actually, the last four years, because it's just been you know, one thing after the other. And um, there's been an enormous downturn in the economy, as you probably would read about in the newspapers, but um, you know, we all get through in the end and 
I think, you know, this country, uh, which I'm very proud of, and I'm very proud of the people in it, I'm very proud of you young people, because you're the ones that are going to be the torchbearers for tomorrow. Um, we've just all got to do our best, and if we all do our best, then we'll win through. So, I'm a very positive person, and um, yes, no, we're going forward, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy, thank you very much. Um, please explain why you built a football stadium. Well, I bought, built a football stadium simply because the, 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 the football stage, uh, stadium we were at uh, before was, uh, was uh, falling to pieces. It was a hundred years old, it was in the long, wrong part of Reading. It was fine when it was built back in um, you know, the at beginning of the last century. But today, in today's day and age, it was just too old-fashioned in the wrong place because it was landlocked by houses all around it, you couldn't park there, there's no, everybody in those days used to walk everywhere, they used to walk to football and so there wasn't any parking space or anything like that, the stadium was old, it wasn't an old seater stadium which is what we have to have these days, so it was, it was falling to bits and so uh, the reason for building a new stadium was to make it user friendly and we built this stadium here, the Medeski Stadium near the M4 uh, Junction 11, just off the um, the relief, you know, the relief road, the A33 relief road. So therefore, it's in the right place at the right time, and um, you know, it's just a magnificent state, and I'm very proud of it actually. Why did you buy Reading Football Club? Well, I, I bought Reading Football Club because nobody else would. Um, in 1990, the, the, the club was going broke. Um, the liquidators were knocking on the door, and the powers of be at the time were trying to find somebody who would take it over. And um, I was the man of the moment because I was quite wealthy, having started the auto trader business, which was very successful. So I decided to put something back into the area where I'd started this enormously successful business. And um, it, it, was, um, it was very tough because I wasn't a football fanatic as such, but I thought the football club was the was what everybody wanted in the local area because it's a very old club that was established in 1871. It's the fourth oldest club in the country and it was certainly worth preserving. And that's why I got, it was for, for community more than anything else. And that's, so that's what I decided to do. Um, what's your strengths in being chairman? What is my strength in being chairman? My strength in being chairman is, I suppose, I'm the top of the heap, if you will. Um, you know, people come to see me about all manner of things, and uh, I have absolutely nothing to do with the selection of the football team, I hasten to add, and that is the manager's territory, and he, he decides who's playing and who's not playing. But, um, you know, when it comes to the consideration of buying players, then I'm involved, and um, uh, just uh, I'm doing what I'm doing now, talking to you to like for young people. Uh, and basically a PR function, a public relations function of dealing with the press and so on and so forth about the well-being of the club going forward and obviously our, our community aspect of all that. Um, <clears throat> I'm very proud to be the chairman. You, you probably read we've got new owners now, so Mr. Zingarovic, uh, who actually owns the club now, so I'm staying on as chairman uh, for the foreseeable future. But, um, you know, I'm delighted about this... Uh, change because uh, I've been chairman for 22 years and to have the colossal responsibility of all those years is, is quite something and I'm delighted to have managed to get Reading Football Club back into the Premiership and then sort of selling it on to these very wealthy Russian people who hopefully will take it up, onwards and upwards. Um, what's your hobbies? Um, well, I don't have much time for hobbies because I'm such a busy person, you know, doing all my businesses, but I suppose really my hobbies, I don't have hobbies as such. Uh, I like listening to music, um, uh, I'd say I like playing tennis, but I never play, I swim, um, I, I really don't have time for hobbies. I like socialising, I, I like good dinner parties with interesting people and so on, so that probably is my hobby. Don't forget I'm getting on a bit now, so it's not quite the same as when I was young. I probably perhaps did a bit more running and jumping when I was young. I did do the half marathon, the running half marathon, by the way, which is about an old guy like me, so yeah, yeah so still quite active. But um, yes, I like walking, actually, walking, and um, I like uh, 
I do like the countryside and so on. But uh, and I like art. I, I, I'm very fond of art, and I, I get involved with quite a lot of um, the, you know the big galleries in London. That, um, I'm lucky enough to be able to have been able to sponsor in the past for various things and so on. We know you donate to little charities. So how do you choose which charity to donate to? Well. I'm, I'm sort of fresh out of giving at the moment because of um, you know times are hard, but I I have um, I consider everything very carefully. But the trouble is being me is the fact you get so many requests for help you know on a daily basis and it gets quite irksome and um, so I'm very sort of careful about who I give and what I give to. But um, uh, you know I, I, it's a difficult question to ask. It's it's like um, you know, talking about art because everybody has their own perception of art. Everybody has their own perception of giving. But uh, I'm pleased with some of the um, the um, largesse that I've done in the past. And I, I'll tell you what, the best thing that I've ever done in terms of donating uh, money and so on is to my school across the way called the John Levesque Academy, and it's a school in 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 Gridley, which is a um, a deserving part of Reading and that has given me probably more satisfaction than anything else I've done simply because this school um, is now uh, is turned around the local area and last summer we sent 11 pupils to the university which was fantastic, unheard of for that school and we also won the under 18's National School Boys Championship Cup which, um, which was a game which was an absolutely amazing feat for this school when you can say that 800 schools around the country took part in this competition and we won. So I'm very, very proud of that and that's the best thing I've ever done in terms of my giving. Do you feel that education is important? Absolutely essential, it really is. It's what it's all about. I mean, I think that education doesn't matter what you do in life later on, whether you're successful or not. But education is the fundamental root of all being, and to get a good education, you can't do better than that. No, I'll tell you what, it'll put you right forever. Do you know what? If you if you're unlucky enough to get jobs and, and so on, so if you've got a good education, it can inspire you to do things that you will have satisfaction from. Whereas if you didn't see that in the first place, you wouldn't. I mean, my school, for instance. I mean. Everybody is good at something. You're good at something. You're probably good at something that you're not good at, and you're probably good at something that she's not good at, and you're probably not good at something he's not good at, and he's probably good at something, and so on. And so, therefore, if you can um, find out what you're good at, then my my, my, my my advice is pursue that, because that will uh, take you through and make you uh, feel good about yourself, and make everybody else feel good, good about you. What's your favourite charity? My favourite charity, uh, the John Medeski Benevolent Fund. It's a charity that everybody gives to me and I keep it. Ha ha. <laughs> 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 no, no, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, good question. Uh, what's my favourite charity? Uh, oh, I have to think about that. I'm uh, sure. I think any, uh, I think sort of um, anything to do with with children's very popular on my list because you know, young people and you you're very lucky young people I have to tell you there's a lot of young people that don't have the the, the opportunities that you've got and uh, through no fault of their own you know and, and I think it's great that we can help people that are disadvantaged you know children in need and be the um, with the, the, the BBC are just doing now with Pudsey the Bear, you know, and they came and filmed me yesterday with Tony Blackburn to do a piece on that. And we're putting a video on at the weekend uh, on, 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 you know, to appeal to all the people who come to see the football match on Saturday. But I, I give a child a chance is one that I'm pretty keen on because it's something that my director of my local radio station started many, many years ago. It's a local charity and again, give a child a chance. It's it's, it's quite local and quite dear to us at Reading 107 FM, which I think we're going to visit later on. It's the radio station that I own just around the corner, well, just at the stadium, so you go and see the studios and all that sort of stuff, okay? So I want to go around there and uh, I'd like to ask the DJs a few questions. So, yeah. So this is it. If you want to if touch the uh, touch, have a bit of a touch of the walls. 
Does that feel really funny? I haven't touched the walls. Yeah. Yeah. Feel funny? Yeah. That's strange. Why do you re Yeah. Why not. is that? Why is that? Do you reckon? For the sound. Because the um, insulation. Absolutely, it's for the sound. Yeah, that's it. Because I'm in here going yeah da 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 da. Right, we don't want it to bounce off everywhere. Have you ever like on your cameras or on a microphone recorded in your house or at school or something and you hear that sort of echo and everything that's going around? Yeah. That's because it's just bouncing off all the walls. What we've got, we need to have walls because you can't have a room without walls. So what we do is we put these walls up and then have this little bouncy fabric and it absorbs the sound and makes it sound, well, it sounds like this. Imagine some kids going without Completely sound day just because they don't have the money. It's me yakking at the moment. I'm pre-recorded. I pre-recorded it so I can have a chat to you guys at the same time. So uh, yeah, that's what it is. We've got this whole computer system here and all these bits here with faders and stuff like that so that we can, you know, make the music louder if we want to, if it's our favourite song. It's a Lady Gaga song, you know, I turn that up really loud and it's a boring song, I bring it down a little bit so it's a bit more quiet. You know. If you could describe yourself in three words, what would they be? Uh, creative, uh, three words. Very good looking. <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? Don't you agree? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you were interviewing us, what would you ask us? What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? How do you become a... D I don't know. How do you become a... D I don't know. What does that what does that mean you have to do, I don't know? Hmm? What does that mean you have to do when you're an I don't know? Well, maybe I would want to be a performer of some sort. I, I got that. I, you know, when I, you were interviewing both of oh, there's a little there's a little actress if ever I saw one. Hmm. No, you're very well, you're all very, very confident, which is great because that's what it's all about and you know, looking at people straight in the eye and just Having confidence in what you're doing is very, very important and uh, take you a long way. So, you know, when I go to some of these schools locally, the poor little kids haven't got the confidence that you guys have got. And, you know, they don't give you eye contact and they sort of well, you know, talk to you like this. And when you present them the prize, they go like that and take it and off they go. But we've changed that quite a bit because I, I do insist that, you know, young people do look people in the eye. And, and I'll tell you the other quality that I like to see in young people, and it's so important, and it'll last all your lives, and, and it'll put you in a different place to a lot of people, is that's good manners, you know, please and thank you, and, you know, ladies first, excuse me, ladies first, yes. Okay, so, you know, all these little tiny things that people forget, but they are so important because they mean a lot, and especially young people, if you show courtesy, Especially to old people like me, we really appreciate it and it means a lot to us, so just bear that in mind. If you were invisible for a day, where would you go? Well, I couldn't answer that. I couldn't answer that because you're far too young. I'm sorry. You're far too young. I couldn't answer that. You're far too young. If you... <laughs> but the... But the uh, 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 your teacher John's laughing his head off. Okay? <laughs> just to give you a clue. Just to give you a clue. Yeah, I think you have answered it. <laughs> <laughs> If you were a superhero for a day, um, would you be good or bad, and what would your powers be? Well, I, I believe in the power of good, so I'd be good. And what was the, the second part? And what would your powers be? Um, my powers would be to apprehend criminals. Okay. If you could swap places with one person in the world, who would it be? John Wodeski. <laughs> so John Wodeski. So do you like being yourself? Yes. And I think we should all like being ourselves. There's no point in wanting to be somebody else. I really mean that. Okay. If you could rid the world of one thing, what would it be? Disease. Mm. Do you have a specific disease you would want to rid of? Um. That's okay. A very good question, I must say, very challenging. Um, well, actually, funnily enough, as we speak, I'd like to see these <laughs> these elm trees uh, saved because um, you know, it's such a sadness to see all these trees being destroyed. And the other, you know, it can go on. I mean, like you know, there's tuberculosis with with badgers and uh, and so on. I think it's very sad that uh, you know these cows are getting tuberculosis and uh, TB. That is. And um, 
you know, poor old badgers are going to all be culled, apparently. But I mean, I think, you know, things like that, but, um, you know, the force of nature is the force of nature now. Nature has a way of eradicating all sorts of things, and it's just nature's way of leveling the playing field, if you like, and without these, the, these diseases and so on, then we'd probably have too many people in the world, too many cows, too many trees, too many badgers. <laughs> it's, 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 it's basically, uh, in the overall scheme of things, nature culls and does it on its own without human intervention. It's quite interesting, in my humble opinion, about how it all works, you know, the ecology of it all and so on. Anyway, sorry. Yes? If you had a time machine, where would you go? Oh dear. Well, I don't know whether I'd go back, because um, if we go back, things are far more difficult than they are today, I can assure you. you know, I mean, you know, for instance, getting here from your school today would probably take about two days. <laughs> so, I mean, um, I'm very pleased with um, <clears throat> the progress we've made. It's a question of making sure it carries on in, in the right way. But, um, I mean, if it's, how long for? Um, day? A day, oh, well, a day, that's easy then. Well, I, yes, I'd like to go back to the 15th century then and see what's happening then. But I, you know, be stuck in the middle of London because I don't think much else going on anywhere else. There we go. What do you prefer, tea or coffee? Um, it depends my mood and what time of day it is. I, I like tea and I like coffee. So, I mean, I suppose, um, no, I've got a, I haven't got a, uh, you know, I suppose I drink more tea than I drink coffee because, uh, and I certainly uh, don't drink either of them after about six o'clock because uh, they have a lot of caffeine and you can you know, impair your sleep. Um, do you, which one do you like the most, sun or rain? What do you think? Sun? What do you think? Yeah, funny <laughs> enough, yeah. Meat or veg? What? Meat or veg? Both. But I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, you can't have one without the other, as far as I'm concerned. I think that you, know, you, you must know you've got to have that daily five, which annoys me a bit because I think I'll have only my daily five and uh, vegetables and fruit and so on. But um, no, I mean, I, 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 I'm a carnivore. I do like meat, but I, you know, I really like vegetables. So uh, just normal, really. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Your answers have been very good. Thank you very much, yeah, and your questions have been very good indeed as well, let me say. So, well done. And my best wishes to Borate Walton Church of England School, Primary School, yes?